Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to be talking briefly about how we use WordPress to send push notifications and email alerts. So like uh, lots of other publishers, um, we send out lots of alerts and notifications uh, to users who obviously opt in um, when news breaks. Um, and we use WordPress to send out all of those push notifications, email alerts. Um, it also controls the breaking news bar that appears at the, uh, the top of the site, site-wide. Um, and we've had it integrated into WordPress for several years now. And the reason we do so is um, we try to centralize as much of the workflow in WordPress. It's really important that everybody be able to do their work without leaving WordPress. Um, it also allows us to really kind of control the user experience. For, for, um, so for example, you know, with user permissions, not everybody can send out a push notification. We can be very like, careful about who has that ability um, and then make sure that they do it right. Um, you know, we find that when you introduce like a new platform to a, a big group of users, there are inevitably problems um, and mistakes are made and it gets complicated. Um, doing it all within WordPress just makes them more efficient and also re reduces the, the chance that, a, that an error is made. Um, and the other thing that really um, um, is, is, is really important in this particular, with this particular example is, is speed. It takes a lot less time and you know, speed really matters when, you se when you're sending out breaking news, push notifications. Um, <clears throat> you know, we find a real advantage to pushing first, to being the first to, to break news and send it out to our users. Um, you know, when we look at sort of the open rates, um, according to Urban Airship, it's 2.5% for media properties. Our average is 3.7%, but we'll see it go as high as 10% if we're the first news organization to break something. Um, so there's definitely an advantage to being early, being first. Um, and you know, the team, they'll send me screenshots of like their push notification ahead of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and USA Today. Um, they get very competitive. Um, so speed matters, although I will say that, you know, don't go too fast. Um, there's nothing worse than having to send out a correction to a push notification. You know, we tell people, you can't take these back um, when you send them. So if you screw up, everybody will, will, will see that you, you, screw, you screwed up. Um, so in, in our case, we use Maripost for, for email, Urban Airship, to send push notifications. Um, I'm going to play a little video, show you what it looks like to send out a push notification. Um, we're using the Maripost API and Urban Airship API to, um, to make this all happen. Um, so you'll see news alerts as a post type. Um, and we've just made it really sort of simple for them to go and create a new alert. pick what story they want to push. They, they ask that we show them the URL that they're pushing to because a lot of headlines are the same. Um, and so they would occasionally worry that they were going to send an old story. Um, so we reveal the, the URL there. Um, you can then customize what the text of the push is going to be. Um, you can pick what list you want to send it to. Um, if you turn on breaking news, that's when the um, email blast option becomes visible. Um, and then you can send out the email at the same time. And you know each you don't have to fill out these fields. So if you don't fill out um, the um, headline field, it will just pull in the headline from the story. Um, but you can override it and, and put something, something else in. Um, you can preview what the breaking email alert is going to look like, in this case. As I said, it was going out to post and page six. You can see both. And then you can choose to, to turn on that breaking news bar at the top of the site. Um, this is really simple. There isn't, um, the kind of, if you, you know, log into Urban Airship directly, there are a lot of other options. And it's, it's complicated. And then we'd have to you know, have people go for two hours of, of push notification training. Um, so we've made it really simple. It's all within their workflow. As soon as they publish the story, or even at the same time in another window, they'll get the, the alert ready, and they hit publish, and, and it goes out immediately. Um, 
So that's what push notifications in WordPress looks like. I will, there are questions. <clears throat> I mean, we think a lot about user permissions and what you should be able to do at various levels, and we're constantly adjusting them because we realize that, like, well, this group of people need to be able to do this, and this group of people need to be able to do that. So um, in the newsroom, very few people have the ability to send a push notification. Um, and so it's really, it, it is, there is a sort of editor on duty 24-7 who has that capability so, because we have to send them at 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, but it's uh, somebody who's in a position of authority who's going to take it seriously and do it right. Um, like what story rises to sort of be worthy of a push notification, that is, I, I wish it was a sort of black and white. Um, we occasionally argue about whether the story was push-worthy or not push-worthy. Um, you know, that's, it's a judgment call. Um, we, have a, uh, we also have a, a flashing siren that goes off when they send a push to tell everybody else in the newsroom that they just sent a push. Um, <clears throat> also, just sort of having them keep tabs on what other organizations are pushing is really important. So they have, there's a screen where they can actually see what, um, what other folks have pushed out. Um, and occasionally they miss a story, and occasionally they push something that probably wasn't worthy of a push notification. Well, the you know push notifications only go to the quarter million people, give or take, that that have our that have downloaded our apps, and it's a pretty small percentage of our overall digital audience. So, 60 million Comscore uniques a month. Only 250,000 people are using the app. They tend to be really loyal, heavy consumers who are like reading multiple times a day, spending a really significant chunk of time. <clears throat> there was a month where we saw app usage decline, and we were like trying to figure out if it was a technical issue. And we realized that we had sent out like a third of the number of push notifications as we had the previous month. And you know, the thing about push notifications, it reminds people to use your app. Um, and I think we, we didn't realize, you know, sometimes it's hard to track because somebody may not actually open a particular push, but it is a, it is a reminder because they, you know, they'll see it on their, on their lock screen that this app exists and maybe it reminds them to, you know, go read other news if that's not the particular story they're interested in. Um, so it's a little bit hard to say because we don't see always that one to one, but we definitely, you know, we saw, we saw usage decline when, when we sent far fewer pushes. So um, this doesn't push to Apple News. Um, we can publish. We publish to Apple News when, like, when we use the the um, uh, Apple News plugin, um, but we don't push to Apple News through here. Um, Apple tends to have some different guidelines about what stories to to push. Um, they've discouraged us, for example, from pushing breaking news. Um, just because I guess the, it, within Apple News, it doesn't always get received by users the same time that you actually send out the, the, the push in Apple News. Um, so they've recommended sort of more, somewhat more evergreen, sort of something that could be relevant you know, six hours later. Um, so we would have to add a different option for that. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same breaking news. Cool. Thank you.